here we we have this dream uh, of a of a global database which tells us something about the justice needs of citizens um, what routes what path they take in trying to meet those justice needs and uh, whether they're satisfied with the outcome that they ultimately achieve if they follow uh, those paths in management they have something else they have a saying which is basically you can't manage what you can't measure and uh, that's probably been a leading adagium for uh, our efforts to to think about whether you could construct uh, such a global global database we in the West uh, have uh, forgotten how the rule of law really comes about you could say and it is not something that you can start from a clean slate draw out a, a, a theoretical system and implement it uh, the way I believe the rule of law comes about is a very organic process uh, with uh, different developments, uh, different issues that are addressed, that are solved uh, by a society, by different uh, conflicting interests, different groups. So I think this is a very organic process. A study that Hill has done in Mali gives information about concrete issues, uh, real problems that people face that can be resolved and they will then if, if you use these problems as the starting point for reform, for improvement, for projects, for programs, then slowly but surely in a very or, uh, incremental and organic uh, way, I'm convinced that you contribute to the, to, the, to, the, to the rule of law in Mali. We get people, both from uh, the official sector, but also people from civil society organizations out of their comfort zone when we say that we are asking people about justice and not lawyers or professors at law school or judges at the Supreme Court, etc. So this is indeed uh, kind of sounds unusual to them, but uh, when we explain very well that problems, uh, we can make the, the uh, analogy, analogy between legal problems and diseases. Uh, people can recognize diseases, at least the symptoms, and they can say when they have a need for uh, a treatment or a need to get better. The same with legal needs. Uh, people recognize when they have a problem and when they need to resolve this problem. Also, people can say when they feel that it was so fair or unfair. And uh, we say that this is important. Uh, and I must admit, and we've seen this uh, with you, that this is not the first thing that policymakers are thinking about, that people can, uh, uh, um, can, can, can talk and uh, uh, express meaningful um, opinions about justice. But I think we are uh, contributing to turning a little bit this uh, kind of uh, conception. If you say as a policymaker, you really wanted to make data more of a cornerstone, then I suppose a, a rule of law programming budgets in general should include a certain component of uh, collecting that data and collecting it periodically. What you often see is that embassies and donors are much more inclined simply because that's the way their system works to spend money on training judges or uh, building a few courtrooms or doing something very practical that has a concrete result than spending it on collecting data to understand what you need to do. We know the, the geolocation of each interview, so 8,000 interviews. Um, we are now at here exploring what knowledge can be extracted from this data. So one particular way to do it is, for instance, is to see whether there are um, uh, uh, geographical patterns in how problems occur. Also, we are going to break down the uh, the, the data by different um, socio-demographic uh, uh, data to see, for instance, whether the geolocation of problems and their resolution depends on gender, on uh, education, income, etc., etc. From a, just a, a curiosity point of view, it's, it would be very interesting to do uh, those kind of uh, linking. Um, at the same time, if I look at the, at the reality in Mali, um, uh, we're talking, of course, just the sector at a very basic um, basic level. Um, so I do think uh, local data can be interesting. At the same time, uh, I think these, this information is, is relevant to create, uh, again speaking for Mali, uh, the kind of feedback mechanism between 
uh, how the justice sector performs and what the population feels. It's a big dream, but it's in a different way. It's very down to earth. I think if uh, if a rule of law programming uh, in countries and also uh, uh, with international uh, support would actually focus on resolving the issues that people uh, face. Uh, that uh, again, it sounds very very down to earth, but I think it would be a, a, a very big change. Um, and if that would be done in a manner that is, uh, uh, like I said, more more organic, more iterative, where uh, where the process of how the reforms are. Uh, are implemented, uh, the, 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 the interactions between the different interests and different groups in society would form an integral part, part of, the, of the support to rule of law development and the rule of law development in these countries, I think uh, that, would be a, that would be a very big, uh, big um, improvement and a big change. Uh, I think it could have a lot of impact and I think the studies that Hill has been doing uh, can be uh, like a motor or a, a, a motivator for for people to um, to actually do that. So um, uh, I would say keep up the good work.